Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Coming to you on Tuesdays, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate, home ownership, and community related. We are here for our next four week series. And joining us is Matt Hudson with First American Title. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Thanks for having me, Tracy. <laughs> so glad to have you here. Great so, to be here. We are going to be talking title insurance, the exciting world of title insurance. But what many of you may not know is what title insurance is, why do you need it, and some other caveats that go along with title insurance. So for the next four weeks, stay tuned, and we're going to give you some great information. So with that, let's uh, let's get started. Um, this first episode, we're going to be talking about what is title insurance, right? So what is it? How does it work? And uh, really the first two episodes, we're going to really kind of dive into title insurance because a lot of people, you know, don't realize, right? You you decide to list your home for sale or you decide you're going to buy a home and you don't realize that there's this process going on, um, you know, in the background, really, right? So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So, right. So. So. Okay. So, if you decide you want to list your home for sale, one of the first things I do, right, when we sign listing paperwork that says yes, we're going to list your home for sale and all the information so that we can get it right in the MLS so that it gets pushed out. But another thing that I do is we send over um, a request for title insurance to right. to you and to your team. To us. Yes. And, and that's what we do. <laughs> and that's what we do. Yep. So title insurance in general is a one-time premium that you pay that insures the uh, use and enjoyment of the property for the reason you purchased it. And yep. it differs from other policies as that it stays in effect the whole time you own it. You don't have to renew it, get new policies, or... Um, pay any more premiums. It's just one time up front and usually paid for by the seller for an owner's policy. And then we have a mortgage policy as well. So your mortgage company wants to have a title insurance policy, usually required uh, basically insuring their their foreclosure rights if anything was going to happen bad in the future. Right. Which, which you know, we hope that it doesn't. And in most cases, it does not. Right. Um, but yeah, so the title insurance, so when you're the seller and you're getting your owner's policy, that is just ensuring that you, you know, you have clear title, right, to that right. to that home, that you have all rights to transfer the property, that nobody else has any claims on it, right? Like you haven't, you haven't, you know, done a repair, right, to your home and decided, I'm just not going to pay this contractor because if you do that, they can put what's called a lien, a lien a and lien. you don't want liens. So, no, we don't want liens. Right. So, so title insurance is... It's just that it's really an insurance policy, but we love that it's a one time, it's a one time thing and you, you know, you're set. So. Right, right. So let's say you as a realtor, you're going to yeah. list a house, you make an appointment with the seller, you're going to put it on the MLS, you're going to call me and say, Matt, I need to get pre-title work on this property. So then what my team's going to do is we're going to go through all the public records, see if there's any liens, mortgages, encumbrances on the title and tell you what needs to be cleared so that way the seller can deed the property over to the buyer. Right. And then we put an insurance policy on top of it saying we guarantee it. We guarantee that that uh, there are no liens on the property. Right. And that policy, if something comes up afterward, that's where the insurance right. kicks in. Right. And um and, and that and that I've seen that happen, not with First American title, but you know, as realtors, you know, we don't um you know, we can recommend to our clients, you know, a, a title insurance company, but it still is up to them to choose which one they want to work with. And I have had that happen before where the title insurance cleared the title and missed something. They missed mm -hmm. that there was um, a homeowners association. There were some back dues. So, but because the title insurance, right, it's, it's a policy and they're guaranteeing that it wasn't on that purchaser. They, you know, or the seller, they didn't, right. nobody had to take care of that except for the, the title insurance company. Okay. So, you know, that's something is that you're getting, you know, professionals that are doing their due diligence. And like I said, with First American, I've never had this <laughs> issue, had this issue. But in the event that, you know, something is missed, it's, you know, that is your insurance or your assurance that you're not going to have any surprise bills come at you after the fact. Right, right. And and that's yeah. that's why you would want the title insurance policy, because there are things that are not recorded and not on public record, but somebody may still have a legal right to that uh to that property. So right. that's where the title insurance kicks in, file a claim, 
verify that the claim is in fact a claim and then yep. the title title insurance <laughs> policy will cover you for that. That's yeah. great. And so that's for the so that's the owner's side of things, but then you were also mentioning how, you know, the lenders require the uh the mortgage policy and that is um that's a buyer. I mean if you think about it, right? You're borrowing a very large sum of money from a third party to be able to purchase your home. So that third party wants to make sure, hey, if if you don't do what you said, if you don't, you know, keep your promise and, you know, continue to pay this, you know, and for some reason, you know, you're you're not going to have the home, you're going to lose the home. We want to make sure that the money that we invested in good faith that is it's being covered or, you know, we have we have our assurances. Right, right. right. Yeah. And and most mortgage companies, I've I've actually never really run into one that has not required a title insurance policy, but they have a separate policy that they that they get for themselves as they are the insured. So they want they want to have that first for what we call first lien position. Mm -hmm. And that means that if, if something were to happen, they're first in line to get paid off. And if they're not, that's where that mortgage title insurance policy will kick in and, and they'll file a claim against that. Um, it's kind of boring, but I, <laughs> I like it. It's yeah. uh, you, you go through, you get to look through the historical records and and see what's been placed against the property or what's been paid off in the history of things. You you uh, you know we, we'll see old records on title that'll be written in shorthand and you know with, yeah. the, with yeah. uh, you know some people not not being able to read cursive it may cause some problems in the future. But <laughs> you know they don't even teach that anymore in school. Like or if you know kids are having a hard time, they're like oh it's it's okay. I'm like yeah. wow okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, changing world. Yeah, yeah. Changing Don't world. have to sign your name many times anymore, yeah. except when you're signing to purchase your home. Actually, even that, we do a lot of electronic paperwork now. So yes, you, yes. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. I started in the business 20 years ago, we went from title plants and just rooms and rooms and rooms of files of, of abstracts and plat maps, and and it's it's gone quite digital over the last few years. When, yeah. when I started in the business, it was. Uh, uh, carbon copied papers, you know, you, you get yes. the original, you get the pink yeah. one, you get the gold, you get the green, and it's all different now. Yeah. Oh, it's so different. And, you know, even on the real estate side as well, um, I mean, it's very rare that we actually wet sign, you know, with paper. For those of you who don't know, that's paper and an ink pen. Yes, yes. <laughs> wet sign something, everything. I mean, mm -hmm. from listing paperwork to purchase agreements, I, I mean, Really, we do it all electronically now. Even if we're meeting in person with with someone, we yeah. still have the paperwork all done electronically. So right. yeah, it's definitely a little little different now. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. So you say boring. I say it provides stability and peace. Right, title insurance. So however you want to look at it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you 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 know you own your home. There's you know nobody's distant relative from the past that can come up and say, "Hey, wait a minute, that was my grandpa's farm a hundred years right. ago, and I've got a right to that property." <laughs> right, yeah. right. But until you do pay off your your mortgage, then you and whoever your lender is technically kind of own it together, right? Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but but you have the right. But that's but that's part of the process as well. Is making sure when you you mentioned a lien. That just means that that is someone who has a vested interest in the property. And so when you do go to sell, they are, if they're the first lien holder, they are first in line to get the money or the proceeds that comes from that sale. So yeah, <laughs> because it, it goes in the timeline. So uh, who the, what we call the lien priority or lien superiority goes, you know, whoever was on, on title or on that public record first. Okay. So if let's say for example, you have a house with uh, two mortgages on it. You've got a you've got a mortgage and an equity loan, and you only want to refinance that first loan, but maybe you want to keep that equity loan. Mm -hmm. Then at that time, that uh, what we would call the subordinate lender, being the second mortgage, would file a subordination agreement, keeping themselves in second lien position, so that a new mortgage company could get right in line back in in, in their first lien. Spot. Yeah, <laughs> they can yeah. they can stay in first, right. so. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as they rightly deserve, right? Right. <laughs> They, in, in most cases, that's more money, more more of right. a uh, more of a lien on the property, so they want that first lien position. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so that is that's in a nutshell what title insurance is and and kind of how it works, right? Right. And uh, I think we're gonna the next episode we're gonna go and talk a little more in detail as to like how that carries through into the closing, the yes. closing process yes. and the, 
and the closing and, and really the, the transaction and what happens from those initial steps then, you know, on through. So if you are really enthralled and you're curious to hear more about the title insurance process, which I'm sure you are because this really is for a lot of people, this is, you know, a lot that you know, you may or may not understand, even if you've gone through the process of buying or selling a home. So um, stay tuned next week. Matt and I will be back and we are going to be talking about the closing process and how title insurance and the title company is involved in that process. So thanks so much for joining us today and we'll see you next time on Tea with Tracy. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Matt.